The idea for this show really derived from an ongoing program we have at the Ackland to present exhibitions of recent acquisitions. We are always making acquisitions and it's a good chance for us to show them to the public. The title is Good Object, Bad Object. Um, I should say right away this is not a judgment. This is not a good and bad objects in any sense of aesthetic quality or formal success. All of these works they counteract a rather traditional view of sculpture, of the single object on the pedestal in the middle of the room. That's a bit of a straw man, I know, but it's a useful exercise in trying to see how these various sculptures undermine that, contradict it, subvert it in ways that I find um, stimulating and fun. This is, these are not new strategies. Uh, artists have been, sculptors have been using these strategies since the early 20th century and the revolutions in sculpture and art that happened then. Show wants to highlight a number of ways in which the sculptures on view, so to speak, behave badly in terms of the conventional expectations of what sculpture is. Some spread out horizontally on the floor, some hang from the ceiling, some lean against the wall, Others use mirrored surfaces to all but dissolve the object, while in yet other cases, language and fragmentation are used to question where and what the object is. All this makes for a very diverse and I think lively exhibition. Over the last 10 years, we've done special exhibitions on uh, photography, recent acquisitions, prints, drawings, and I thought it was sculpture's turn. And in looking over things we've acquired, I started to see that we had a really good group of sculptures, in international sculptures made since about 1980 that could be brought together in a stimulating way. And that intersected with um, some discussions I've been having with uh, private collectors close to the Ackland, our good friends J.K. Brown and Eric Diefenbach, who have made their extraordinarily almost bottomless collection available to us for use and I began to see interesting ways to combine some of those pieces with ours. Five works that are in this show we um, have collected over probably 20 years, different times, so they weren't all bought in like one period of time. We offer uh, you know, our collection uh, for the, uh, the Ackland's curator, for Peter Nesbitt's uh, you know, perusal. Um, and uh, you know, Peter uh, selected uh, the works um, and you know, the interesting uh, part there, I suppose, is uh, you know, uh, seeing uh, you know, what, what themes uh, external observers uh, you know, see in the collection uh, and, and how they see connections uh, between uh, some of the works we've, we've collected. One of the collaborations that's particularly important in this case that I really want to highlight um, uh, is the collaboration with our head of exhibitions and installation design, Nathan Marzen who really I acknowledge as a co-organizer of this show because his genius in placement and design of an exhibition is especially important for this exhibition which brings together extremely disparate objects and uh, has to work as an overall experience. Um, and so his skill in layout design, typeface design, spatial understanding has been essential to this show. Using the technology that we have now, uh, exhibition layouts change a lot less than they used to. Because we can lay it all out in CAD software, we can render it in a way that looks very real. It's most often that we'll have everything very much set where it's going to go in the gallery space and the curator will stop in to see things live. Occasionally that changes their mind because you can't fake everything in the model to make it look exactly like it. So they might see an angle or a placement that they don't quite like um, and we'll make small changes. But for the most part, the design is set and then we go in and install it, which is really good for conservation of objects. Well, I think my um, hope for all the visitors to this show is that they will smile, that they will be intrigued, they might even be irritated, um, but that they will come away with a much deeper appreciation for some of the strategies that contemporary sculptors use and some of the emotional depth that can, can arise out of those strategies. I hope they 
could get a sense of, in a way, what a permanent collection, permanent gallery of modern and contemporary sculpture could look like at the Ackland. Um, because in a way, that's how I'm approaching it. It's like this is, in a way, uh, the kind of gallery that I would love to see at the Ackland as a permanent installation.